Howdy, I'm Cyberax with Alongously Crafted. And today we're going to be talking about super fans and super enemies. A lot of people talk about super fans. You can talk, find lots of videos about super fans, but there's very few videos out there about super enemies. So let's talk about how to make super fans first. And what is a super fan? So a super fan is someone that will buy your products regardless of what you release in essence if you release junk they'll buy it if you say hey we're gonna do an event uh you know on the other side of the world they'll buy tickets and they'll come you know check it out and they'll uh they'll join up and they'll be there side by side with all the other super fans there's a lot of places that have really good super fans like good mythical morning has probably hundreds of thousands of them um Neebs gaming tons of people have super fans and you could see this the super fan concept in discord channels you know a lot of discord channels the mods are the super fans where the mods show up every day and they they do um modding stuff or they help out or you could see a lot of super fans in a lot of different games but they're different than normal fans because normally they'll they'll buy stuff um pretty regularly they'll speak out and having super fans in a business is a multiplier so one of the goals of any you know person that's doing a youtube channel or the out there influencer is their goal is to make super fans because super fans multiply your sales they multiply your reach they um, go out and tell all of their friends about it and everything is going on um, you can see this happening right now with civilization 7 there's a lot of super fans that are coming out and saying civilization 7 is going to be great um without realistically looking at it you could see the same thing with people that um still support the halo franchise you know halo's got like five to ten thousand people if that playing it right now there's was 800 people streaming halo mcc when i checked last night it went from the number one game in the world to nothing nobody's even playing it it's just a dumpster fire um so you can still see super fans in that ecosystem that are still playing the game or still show up or still defend 343. Um, you know, some of those super fans are still defending Bungie, even though Bungie's collapsing with Destiny. So you see the the fans are out there, and a lot of times they're willing just to ignore whatever the company does. However, at some point, if the company continues to do bad stuff so they have bad releases or say that they um they promise something um that they don't they can't deliver and then they have to pivot and so pivoting is when you typically see a bad or a um super enemy show up so you went from having super fans that you were creating to now having super enemies or super enemy. So you promised, say, you know, a super duper pack. And then you don't deliver so you have a chance at making some super enemies then at that point let's change those colors so then maybe maybe you don't or maybe you only make a few you know so now you've got this pivot where you've got these guys breaking off over into this set so previously, and this is still really big. Most people don't even notice, um, like this is going to be a really small line. Most people don't even notice when they have super enemies created. They just pivot and then they don't realize this. And that's partially why I'm making this video. Because if you don't realize and address this, then you're going to have a bad time. So 
let's make this not purple because it was a failure. Let's make this like an offshoot pink color. So now say you, you have a new plan and this plan is let's say this one is RTX. So now you have another bad release. And same thing, you had to pivot because of failure. You weren't able to do what you promised the community. You failed. So then you had to pivot into something else. And every time you pivot, you're creating the risk of super enemies because you failed to do what you said. Versus here, when you are doing successful, you have a, actually a really good chance at making super fans when you do successful stuff. But every time you pivot, you have this opportunity to create these super enemies. So then say you've got another one and this next one is shaders removed. Now, at some point, this line is going to become more defined because every these start to compound. So every time you start to continuously pivot into these failures, this whole thing compounds, and all of a sudden now you're creating lots more super enemies. And because during this process, there's very few, most of the time when this happens, there's very few successes along this way because this is typically bad staff. So this is bad management, bad leadership. Halo uh, did the same thing. So the Halo IP just pivoted into failure after failure after failure after failure after failure until now the only people that want to play their game are, you know, 5,000 people versus the 300,000 people that were playing it at a time before. So then you pivot down here into another one, and now you've got, let's say, um, this one is, say they come, they're just, say they're out of touch and they prove to the entire industry that they're out of touch by releasing a Minecraft movie. Um, that's just, a joke that's insulting to everybody. So now not only was your failure, you know, massive, but you created a, a huge amount of super fan or super enemies here now because you just put this out to the world to everybody. So now let's talk about what do these super enemies mean? So now you realize, well, we've created these super enemies. A lot of our super fans have maybe not even, aren't even super fans anymore. Maybe they're just normal customers now because of all of this. And maybe some of those super fans like me are now super enemies. So now thought process of my day goes into saying, well, if Mojang's going to continue to fail and cause these problems and continue to pivot into these, then I don't want to support them. So I'm going to start being a negative voice. Oops, that's not a good one. A negative voice to their changes and to what's going on. So now when they do, you know, it probably started here. So maybe you get like a little bit of blockage here and then here you're going to get a little bit more blockage and then here you're going to get a lot more blockage and then here you're going to get a hell of a lot 
blockage and then maybe you get to the point where you've done oops you've done so much damage that uh, you've done so much damage that who were super fans before now aren't even willing to buy your products or to be customers anymore so now you've pivoted into this point where you have a whole bunch of daily blockers and people out here talking smack because you keep failing and aren't addressing the failures instead you just keep pivoting into more failures and instead of firing the people or replacing the people causing this stair-stepping and this constant problem typically the management they continue to build this super enemy and these people against them and at some point just like the stock market or just like anything else you're going to get to the end here and there's going to be so much resistance from this that more super fans are actually going to be created and a better way to probably even do this would damn it what is that why is that a better way to even do this is probably not to put these here but to put these here so now you have these super enemies coming in and saying well mojang just put out this video that's just horrific this just this just horrible movie um and they say it's for kids so if it's for kids then why is youtube allowing it to be monetized and why why is that allowed so then maybe when your movie comes out your a super enemy tells youtube hey i don't like this um video because it's violating youtube policy for advertising to children now if you only had a few one or two super fans do this then maybe it's no big deal and you don't lose any money or sorry i said super fans super enemies but if a whole bunch of super enemies start doing this all of a sudden you start losing a whole bunch of revenue because now your big movie that you just released got demonetized on YouTube. Why? Because a super enemy saw you were breaking the rules and called you on it. At when, if you only had super fans, why would a super fan call you on breaking the rules? They would just let you get away with it. And so right here, you start seeing there's a monetary value to having super enemies. Not only are they creating more super enemies and causing blockage, but they're also causing things that you don't see. And if you're running a company or a, a studio and you don't know you have super enemies, then how do you even identify when something happens or solve it or address them or go to them and apologize and fix it or negotiate or what? Instead, you just keep on this and every loop, it gets harder and harder and harder to to do what you're doing and then that creates more failure which creates more of this loop and at some point hopefully the people failing are going to get fired because the super enemies are speaking out against them and challenging the super fans however if you have this constant failure loop the super fans have a hard time speaking up because there's so many failures now you could say well okay there was an excess a success here um, and this success might have created more super fans. Yep, that's that's absolutely true. So you, it's this is a dynamic, a dynamic world where you're always adding and removing, and that might let you get around some of these failures. Maybe they didn't care about this one. Maybe they didn't care about the the movie, or they didn't care about HCF, and the super fans skipped that one. But then they get down here to this next failure. 
in this next failure. And at some point, you're going to be converting those super fans into enemies. I would say I was a super fan for a long time and now have become a super enemy as Mojang's failed constantly and their management staff has refused to be held accountable and they've refused to to fix the solution and meet the community where they're at. So you can see now, well, I was one of those people that might have reported the YouTube video for violating YouTube rights and, and a policy. And then that causes this system to have less money because of these people. This is also down votes. It's all kinds of stuff that you get in here. Now, I have super enemies. There's hordes of people that hate AI. They hate HD. They hate me. They hate Bedrock. They hate um, whatever. Um, they don't like what I do, and so they speak out against me, and they call me names, and I typically block them, but there's tons of them out there. Now, they're, I'm, they're not super enemies because I failed. They're not my customer. They're super enemies because they're just bigots and don't like what I do and think I don't belong here. So there is a huge difference between are you a corporation and you have super enemies because you made failures and because you made poor choices and you hired bad people that aren't doing their jobs? Or are you doing something that people just rubs their personal identities? A lot of people identify with Minecraft as part of their identity. So if you put HD in Minecraft, that damages their identity somehow. That hurts them emotionally internally because they identify as this minecrafter and they have to protect minecraft as this special thing because they identify it um i mean that's just a mental health issue and and not something we can address as corporations or companies if you have those people out there there's just not much you can do about it but if you're failing in a business or corporation over and over and creating these super enemies and not addressing them you can do a lot to address that and to stop that and you really need to because at some point these are going to offset and you can see this i think with ubisoft uh you can see their stock prices are down 78 some percent you can see it with skull and bones you could see it with um halo more and more you could see it with fable um the wokeness and the DEI of Fable and the making fugly characters. You can see it over there, how many people are speaking out as super enemies now. Um, I think you can see it in a lot of other industries where those corporations and companies are just ignoring those people and those super enemies and just plowing through thinking, oh, well, if we just ignore those people, then no big deal. We have enough customers. But at some point, that ends up being percents of your customer base. And what happens when, like in Halo, that becomes 60% of your, your customer base now is a super enemy against 343? Nobody will buy their games because of how bad they are. You have to give them out free. And they still won't play them even if they're free. So at some point, you have to realize, hopefully Microsoft will realize with the Halo, H the Halo IP that you've done so much damage to the brand and the name that you either need to reset it with putting a new studio in charge and reset it completely and start over and apologize to those super enemies and try to reset your community um microsoft deliberately destroyed halo in their own words they said they wanted to pivot into something else away from what bungie did and made halo and the ip and at every stage that's failed every studio 343 everybody they put in charge of it that's failed because microsoft shoved that down the community's throat and created a whole bunch of super enemies instead of following what bungie made the ip to be and continuing the halo legacy you could see that in star wars i'm a super enemy of star wars you can see that in star trek i'm a super enemy of star trek now because same thing um, people that weren't involved in those ips had nothing didn't know anything about them came in and ruined them the people that did star trek flat out said that never seen a star trek episode before and yet they came in and just ruined it how can i be a super fan when you ruined what i was a super fan of so i was a double lifetime membership of star trek online i had paid the 250 dollars or whatever or 500 dollars to become a lifetime member and uh, when the most recent movies came out and they were just such trash and they just destroy the legacy of roddenberry and destroy the legacy that um, Star Trek had made 
how how can I still be a customer when you destroyed the very essence of what Star Trek is from the ground up? So now I'm a super enemy. So I gave away all my stuff. I haven't played any of those games since. I don't watch any of their content. I speak out against their content. And I speak out against Paramount and the the damage that they've done. So the same thing with Mojang. I, I think more and more Mojang's proven that they are incapable of meeting their goals and doing what they say they're going to do. You can just go back and look at the bingo card from 2023 and how many things that they failed at. And most of them are give me's and they still didn't get them done. Um, it, it's just ridiculous how much failure there is. And so you're starting to see and hear from more and more of these super enemies after each of these things have happened and i think you're going to continue to see more and more of these super enemies show up and more and more negative against the ip until mojang pivots into success which i believe is getting rid of the team in charge and the management and going back to the core of meeting the consumers and the customers and the creators where they're at. So this has been a talk on super fans and super enemies. If you're out there and you're running a corporation, I would do an assessment on your super enemy, super fan counts. The super um, fans that are out there, you should be giving swag to. You should be talking to them. You can see this with big studios. Um, some of the big studios, I think it's 4J just had... Um, a whole bunch of creators and influencers come out to their studio and they did mini games and they let them play some of the new games and and they gave them swag and they're they're taking those influencers and they're treating them like the super fans that they are and so that's the type of world you should be running is you should be taking your super fans loving on them giving them swag giving them special access getting them out there into the community so that they're multiplying your base and then your super enemies, you should be doing the same thing. You should be loving on them and you should be addressing them and you should be acknowledging them and you should try to solve those complaints and issues that they have so that you don't have people fighting against you while you're trying to sell and make a product. Um, if you just ignore that and just plow through as business is normal, at some point you're going to reach a tipping point where you have more super enemies than you have super fans and that's where 343 and halo ip is um i think you're gonna see that's probably where the assassin's creed franchise is gone i think you're gonna see that's where the the fable dragon age franchises have gone that they've pissed off so many people and had so much delay between releases and had put out so much junk that you're gonna see a massive amount of super enemies pop up saying this is just really bad stuff this is not good product um, I think you're going to see that with Civilization VI, this generation too. I'm already speaking out about it because of the failures and how bad it looks and the, the changes that they've made, um, in my opinion, for DEI reasons and for other things, not to make a good quality game based on what it's been and, and to meet the customers and where they're at and what they want. Instead... Um, the studios are trying to make a name for themselves by pivoting into these other things and those pivots are going to cause them to create super enemies and cause them to have more issues. So, I'm CyberX with Outlandishly Crafted and this has been another episode of Complaints Against Mojang. So, like and subscribe, ring that bell, do all that fancy stuff, keep those overlords happy. Actually, you know what? Don't like and subscribe. It doesn't seem to matter if I tell people to like and subscribe, so don't do it. Don't like and subscribe. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. I mean, everybody tells you it matters. It matters for them. But at this level of, I think we, you know, we're barely at a, maybe 800, 900 um, subs and one join, you know, 70 extra cents. What's 70 extra cents this month, you know? So don't join. Don't sub. Don't worry about it. It's all good. Have a good afternoon.